Okay. So uh, uh, this is going to be about React JS Essentials, a beginner-friendly journey. First things first, let's know me. Who am I? वैसे तो लाइक जय हैज गिवन माई इंट्रोडक्शन बट आई एम अ रिसेंट ग्रेजुएट फ्रॉम मेडिकेप्स यूनिवर्सिटी इन दौर आई एम अ फ्रंट एंड डेवलपर एट कोरस इन बैंगलोर इंडिया आई एम अ टेक्निकल राइटर फ्री लैंसर कॉन्टेंट क्रिएटर आई क्रिएट कॉन्टेंट ऑन यूट्यूब ट्विटर एक्सेट्रास एक्टिव इन कम्युनिटीज एंड हैकेट ऑन एंड प्रोसियास्ट आई हैव ऑल्सो होस्टेड टेक इवेंट्स एंड नाउ आई एम अ स्पीकर एज वेल so in this webinar we are going to uh, look at this things introduction to react js which is a basic one then key concepts what are the key concepts of react its benefits setting up a react app this is going to be interesting and like what is jsx syntax how components works what are state and props in react handling events just like you handle events in your life <laughs> and then qa session okay so it's a javascript library and uh, we use it to make applications web applications scalable fast performance wise best and the very small tiny concept here used is components so let's understand components uh, by taking real life example example say the edible cookies so you need to store multiple cookies and then you use different different boxes for it so that whenever you want you can have one and eat one right and when that one is finished you can fill up it again so this is what components does in react as well they are small reusable chunk of codes which we can use and in our application anytime and every time moving ahead these are the four key concepts for beginners in react first one is components as we have discussed they are the reusable chunk of codes right so we can use components in our application anywhere second one is jsx syntax so we need to write html in our javascript code that's where we use jsx syntax don't worry we will get into that later third one is props props are basically the data passed from one component to another for example you know just take our example of it and let's say we need to pass one cookie from a component to another cookie then we can use props and the fourth one is state so state is the data stored inside a component okay so the cookie is a data which is stored in a box that can be a component okay moving ahead there are a lot of benefits of react Right. So React JS is very performant. Why? Because in our normal JavaScript, we uses a DOM, which is you know, a manipulation object, data manipulation object. So uh, by using the real DOM, what we do is we refresh a page for every change. But when React uses a virtual DOM, what it does is it just reloads that part of okay so the performance of the page is very effective second one is the concept of reusability as we have discussed earlier components are reusable right so we can use single piece of code anywhere in an application so it reduces line of code as well third one is developer community so now this is uh, one of the biggest advantage i would say because in this time what we need is a support system or community we can say or you know connectivity so when there is a connectivity there is a connection as well so react has a huge developer community where you can you know ask people if you are stuck somewhere or you know uh, you can help someone if 
you think that uh, somebody is uh, having trouble with react code or if they are not uh, able to deploy it so developer community in react is very vast moving ahead now this is interesting uh, tell me if you are with your laptop or pcs so you can do this by now as well if you are operating from your PC or laptop, you can just go to Node.js website and download Node.js if you haven't. Why? Because React needs Node.js. Node.js is basically, uh, we can say that a huge set of uh, libraries or um, uh, uh, kind of, we can say that uh, Node.js gives you a lot of functionalities to include in your React. Okay, packages we can say. So it's a package manage manager as well. You can download packages and uh, use them as it is. Okay, so if you are having laptops with you, you can just download Node.js from here. After that, create uh, install create React app using this command, npm install minus D is for global, and then create react app once you are done with this you can just create your new react app using command npx so do check your node version as well download the latest version of node create a um, uh, uh, folder here react folder which is named as you wish moving ahead yeah so i talked about jsx syntax and here we are jsx is uh, you know html like syntax okay so why we use jsx here we need to use our html tags in our react application in react is what it is a javascript library right so we need to use html in javascript and therefore, we have a JSX like syntax, which allows you to write HTML inside your JavaScript. So, in this example, you can say that it is a snippet of React code, right? Inside this, we have a function called hello, a basic JS function called hello. And we are returning something here that is hello world Sneha here can be anything it can be like hello world cat here or hello world or whatever your name is here so what we're doing here is we are creating an h1 tag here and writing an html here but how is it working because as far as we know we cannot write direct html in our react app therefore we are using a jsx like syntax so we are returning something in our function and that something is a jsx okay moving ahead oh oh wait we have started about components right but this dot is it's saying that we have two different components in react can you can somebody help me or the tortoise that what's the difference between these two components? What is class component or functional component? Let the tortoise uh, be, you know, rest assured with your answers. Functional component is similar to function definition and declaration. Okay, anything else, Vinod, you want to add? Or anybody from the chat? What do you understand by class? Like if you are familiar with Java or JavaScript or you know any concept of oops, you can answer here. Don't hesitate. We all are beginners here. As I said, I have just graduated from university. So anyone wants to answer here? Okay, so let me help the total cool so functional component versus class component i personally prefer functional components 
because of this reasons, like we can use, you know, hooks in this. There are pure functions, okay? There are no life cycle methods. So uh, before React 16, version 16, we used to, uh, we need to use class life cycle methods and these keyword to get our sets done. But thanks to the version 16, what we are doing here is that we are using hooks to prevent our states and to make our functional components stateful. Later on, I'll show you an example as well. There you can see what is, you know, why I prefer functional component. And uh, talking about class components, they are not pure functions. They do have life cycle methods. So, you know, like there are four life cycle methods. First one is instantiated where you instantiate the object on virtual dome, okay? Second one is mounting. Third one is updating. And the fourth one is unmount. So all of these uh, steps have their respective methods called class, uh, called like component did mount, component will mount. As a, uh, there are uh, this life cycle methods, okay? Functional components are easy to read and understand. I completely agree with this point because um, you know practice makes you perfect, right? So I've been practicing with functional components as well as class components. And to my conclusion, I concluded that functional components are better to use, easy to understand and read as well. So you should use functional components wherever possible because they are easier, much easier than class code. So like, what would you prefer? Class component or a functional component? Or like, have you had any experience with all, uh, both of them or anything? Okay, functional, nice. I would love to see you guys make something with React and then post it on socials. Do uh, tag me if you know you find anything helpful from this uh, session. So moving ahead, we have React state and props. So we had this discussion in the um, uh, uh, previous um, slides that React state and props are basically like a cookie inside a box, okay? So let's take that example forward. So state is that cookie which is stored in that box, okay? So now you can eat that cookie anytime and refill that component or that box again, cool. So states are mutable, they are private, and it can be of any type of data. For example, let's say that you are uh, eating that cookie and then refilling it with some pudding or cake. So state uh, data can be of any type. That means data can be a cookie or a cake or a pudding or some um, snack. And that box will be permanently like that. But now let's say you want to transfer one cookie from that box, from box A to another box B. Then we will use props. So that data passed in one comp from one component to another component is props, okay? So they are read only, okay? Uh, and similarly, it can be of any type of data and they are immutable, okay? You cannot change uh, the data in between the transfer, okay? So like, for example, you are transferring cookie from box A but in the middle of transfer, you cannot eat cookie and then pass on that uh, pudding, okay? So that means the props are immutable and state is mutable. They can be changed, okay? So for mutability of state, what we do is we use hooks. So there is a hook called use state. I'll just write name in the chat. What is the name? Use state. We use that hook and uh, using that hook, we can change or update or copy state of one component. 
okay so let's see it uh, by example here it is event handling we are using use state here we are using jsx syntax here we are using events here so this example is something which can help you understand all the concepts which we have just uh, read or uh, understood so uh, just take event handling like what we did in javascript okay or what you did uh, what you do on your pc or laptop pressing a key or clicking somewhere, mouse movements or anything else. These are events, right? So event handling is a process of responding to user events, such as clicks, mouse movements, and so on. We know how to handle or how to tackle situations in real life, right? We know that. Similarly, in the computer language, we should know how to handle those events like the cursor movement or the clicks or mouse movement uh, using functions. So here what we are doing is we have imported React and use state from React. Okay, then we made a function called state. So we are understanding everything here. We took a variable called const we set a variable as car and then we are changing its state as set car color. So we are changing the color of the car, okay? Then uh, we are giving it a state which is false. So by default, the color of the car will be as per uh, uh, the default value, okay? So this false here indicates that you are giving uh, the state to be at zero point and then after uh, the event happens or event handling occurs state will be changed so from false to true okay so what we are doing here is we are returning something here called use uh called uh jsx syntax so we are writing html here uh, i guess everyone is familiar with html here like html and css right Type in the chat box, yes, if you are familiar with HTML and CSS. Nice. If you know basic HTML and CSS, type yes. So, um, yeah. So, like, people are familiar with HTML and CSS, right? So here, what we are doing is we are writing an H1 tag that says using state and props to change car color, okay? Then we perform a event here that's called on click. You can see that there is something, you know, highlighting in this code that is that on click function, right? And we have given it a button as click here. So what we are going to do is we're going to click on that button and after that we are going to change the state of the car you can see here right so uh, for now we have given here is the car as a style color red okay we have given css and the color of this text will be red okay and after the um, uh, event happens the color will be changed cool so there are so many types of events in our uh, React app uh, or in our JavaScript. So some of them are listed here. Do tell me if uh, you have worked with any of them. Like for me, on click in on summit on focus are go to because I use them a lot in my applications or in my um, what can I say? in my projects. So are you familiar with any of these events or have you worked with any of them? You can write in chat. Okay. So like, uh, would you like to share your experience uh, with event handling or in general with React? Maybe you can just type in the chat. 
Like, will you prefer React for projects or applications or how scalable it is or something like that? I wonder my audience are getting the concepts or not. So if you're getting the concepts, do write React in the chat box. If you got what I, you know, just shared with you, then write React in the chat box. I would be more than happy to see if I delivered something good to the audience that, and I would love to see what you are going to make with React or like how this session would help you to get started with React. I would love to see that. Like, okay, Siddhak, Lakshman, and um, Santosh, okay. Anyone else? Okay, so these are the events which we have discussed, like on click basically when you click something. So this event happens when you click on like button or on image or on anything else which you would like to display. On mouse enter, that means whenever the mouse enters that particular component. So you can see that this mouse is entering this component, then something will happen. On mouse leave, that means whenever a cursor leave that component, then something happens. On key up, that means when you press any key or when you, you know, just scroll up or anything like that, then something will happen. On key down, when you scroll down or when you press the down key. On submit, that means when you submit, something so this is generally used in forms like when you make react form and when you want to do a functionality when you want to put a functionality on submit button you can use on submit on the top of the form on focus that means when you focus on something you know like not hovering when you focus so whenever an input field is focused focused that means when you click on something and then you start right Right. So whenever you see your uh, uh, input box, whenever it is focused, it has an outline of blue color by default. Right. And there are many more events. Cool. Then uh, second thing uh, I would like to mention is that uh, with React, you can go with Tailwind CSS. Tailwind is basically CSS framework, which, you know, allows you to write classes inside your tags only okay it is very scalable and i use it very often okay so now we are moving towards the end of our slide and uh, i must say that i had a great time explaining all these concepts just these are just the beginner level concepts okay so you can grow up from here these are you know a foundation for you you can start uh, learning React and you know share your knowledge, build in public. So thank you for watching this presentation.